Hi guys, it's Eva and welcome to my book stacks. This is a very important stack. Today I'm going to be doing my book haul, so all the books I collected in July, which is kind of a lot because it's my birthday month, so I was given books. I also went shopping at used bookstores on my birthday. I ordered some books. It's pretty, pretty all exciting. So this stack is really big. A lot of the books I will say, oh, I did, oh, I can't lift them all. I did read. <laughs> So the first book I got, well, this isn't the first book, but one of the books I got in July was Kristen Hanna's The Great Alone. I absolutely love this book. I've ranted and raved about this book a ton. I think I got it on Amazon Prime Day. It went on sale and I was like, yes. I absolutely loved it and I haven't seen it in any like used bookstores anyway. Plus I want a new copy of it. And so I got home and I actually read, like reread a bunch of it and yeah. I absolutely love it. So <laughs> it is a story about like a 1970s family who the dad is having troubles uh, adjusting with PTSD and he also has an alcoholic problem and so they move out to this wilderness in Alaska. It reminds me of the Alaskan bush people like it is like you're there to survive like um, no other <laughs> reason but yeah it's just all about surviving. There's not a lot of money to be made or anything and living off the land and can, neighbors help them but they go the family goes through some really dark periods some really sad parts. The young girl is like the main I think story about and it shows her I think about 13 and 16 and then um, I think it goes up to when she's about 26. So it's just a generational piece and it but it's really really good it's got a little bit of romance i love romance but i absolutely loved her if you guys love the nightingale definitely definitely check this out so the next books <laughs> i kind of go along with that because i read that first absolutely loved it and i was like i need to read more by her so then i read the nightingale which was really popular um in the last few years and so the next one i got was kristen hannah's fly away and this one is again uh like kind of a generational piece because it um it talks about one girl so there's a girl named tolly and she's lost her best friend kate who she's known for 30 years and then also it includes kate's daughter and uh, her 16 year old daughter who lost her mother and she's having problems with like the last fights they had and then also includes tolly's mother and tolly's mama has like some addiction problems so the, yeah, this is Kristen Hanna's Fly Away. It sounded really good, so I went ahead and picked it up, as well as another Kristen Hanna book. <laughs> so this is Kristen Hanna's Winter Garden. So this is about two sisters who are like completely different. Well, I mean, scoot over. <laughs> who are like com who are completely different kind of people. Like one stayed home, had a career. The other one went off and traveled the world. And what brings them back together is their father's like um, he's dying. And then there's also a mother's story that plays into the story, and I think that's the majority of the story is their mother's story, and it's this long, epic story from Leningrad all the way to modern-day Alaska, and the sisters decide they want to find the truth behind this, their mother's story. So I think that's what most of the book is about, but it looks good. It looks winterish. I'll probably try and pick it up this winter. Uh, and yeah, it looks really good too. And plus, I just love her writing, so I couldn't help but not pick it up. Uh, the next book I picked up was Legendary by uh, <laughs> Stephanie Garber. This is the second in the Carval series. It was my favorite of the Carval series. I just need to find Finale now. Um, I think I found this at Half Price Books, but I absolutely loved it. I think my Carval isn't a hardback, but I'm okay with this being paperback. It'll be easy to reread one day. I kind of want to read the whole set again all together. If you don't know what Carval is about, it is about a story about these two sisters who get drawn into this uh, carnival world and their mother had gone and they want to go and they live on this very secluded island and their dad is kind of harsh to them. So they go off and they go to this very mysterious, magical carnival. They meet boys. One sister is like in the first book, the second book is legendary, and then the third book is both of them together trying to like beat some of the magic. <laughs> but yeah, it's a really fun series. I really enjoyed it, so I'm glad to start collecting them. And then the next book, my friend actually sent me the next couple of books, or not my, friend, my family member, and yeah, because it was my birthday month, and she works in a library, so they're advanced readers copy, and they were just like the books that I guess the library didn't pick up and read, and they need to get rid of them. So the first book is Fly Girls by Keith O'Brien, and 
So this is about five women who uh, struggle to try and race the men. I'm guessing it's a big race around the world. I'm not positive, but this was set in the year 1936. And yeah, it sounded really interesting. Women in aviation history is always fun. And I've read a few books kind of like that this year. So this one is <laughs> just a cool book cover. Now I've heard about this book before. This one is also an advanced reader's copy from her. And this is The Most Fun We Ever Had by Claire Lombardo. I did not realize this book was so big. I don't know when I'm going to get to it. It is a huge, huge book. It's about a loving couple who has started a family in the 1970s. It's brought up to modern day in 2016 because they have four girls. All of them have some extreme kind of problem going on in their life. They're kind of brought together, I think, in this book because one of them had given up a kid years and years before and that son is brought back into the picture. So it's like a family reunite, multi-generational piece, all the struggles they're going through to try and work through them with family. It sounded really, really good. It's gotten really good reviews. I'm so glad she sent this to me. And then the next piece as well, I put it, I don't remember if it was like books to look out for in June or May, but it is A Bend in the Stars by Rachel Bradham. This again is an advanced reader's copy and I definitely remember this one. This one is their mom and dad. So this one is about a family and their mom and dad have been lost right before the war and then she is becoming a surgeon and her brother was like a physicist I believe and it's kind of them going through the war and their grandma was there and raised them and then one person, I think the, the son, the one that was going to become a physicist disappears and it's got a cool train on it but it's not really good. It's not like a different World War II piece than all. I've been reading a lot of like female in World War II Europe. So this one sounded like a very different piece being set in Russia. So I thought it sounded really, really good. And so I had her send me a copy. I hope it's really, really good. Okay. Well, I can't get the half price sticker off this one, but I actually got this in my library. And this one is The Tipping Point by um, Malcolm Gladwell. And this one, I haven't read his books yet, but I like listened to a lot of his, uh, I listened to a lot of his, uh, <laughs> okay, wait. So I listened to a lot of his writing seminars on the online. They have um, a bunch of different writers and actors and it's like called Masterclass, I think. But his were so good and so cool and he talked so much about the Tipping Books or the Tipping Point. So I collected a few of his books. I know what the Tipping Point about. It's that he was like the person that like looked up and researched and he came up with the idea of 10,000 hours. So that is a tipping point of where you become a professional in something and not a professional in something. So this is the one I've been wanting to start off with. So I'm so excited I picked it up. It is a nonfiction piece, but I'm really excited for this one. This one's probably going to go to the top of my TBRs. And then the next one I picked up at Barnes & Noble, it says it was an autographed copy, which is, this is again, but better by Christina Riccio. Re I don't know how to pronounce her last name. She is a booktuber on here and I've watched her for years and years so I couldn't help but like go and get the book in the store. <laughs> and then um, I don't really know what it all it's about. I just know it's about like a YA, it's a YA fiction I believe and it's about a girl and she doesn't just quite fit in right I think if I remember right. Well, I've read a few pages. This doesn't quite fit in. She thought she'd go to college and make friends and have fun and she's just not doing that and she seems to find herself going home every weekend. So I think it's about a girl like trying to push herself out into the real world, trying to make new friends, which is, it's, it's hard. It's really hard sometimes in certain situations. It's so crazy. Once you get like in college settings and high school settings, it was, I think, easier. But once you get out of those settings, when you're in like the adult world, I think it's much, much harder to come across that. And it's much harder to like push yourself out there. The next book I got was by Sarah J. Mass. This is The Court of uh, Mist and Fury. This is the second book in, it's sort of a trilogy, because but there was a fourth book added on the end that's like a midway book in between like a spinoff series. So maybe it's a saga, but um, I would consider it, I think, a trilogy for the most part. Anyways, um, or maybe it was four books. I don't remember. This book starts out with... Uh, thorns crowns and roses or thorns of roses or something it's a more of a beauty and beast retelling but it takes on its own whole entire fantasy world and it's about a girl who goes up where like the fae live and they have all this magic and the humans and fae are like separated at this point and in the first book she meets this really mysterious guy first she meets like the guy who acts 
pretty much like the beast and he's the guy of summer and then this person is the guy of evening i believe if i remember right i'm so bad at details but anyways this was my favorite book in the series i don't know if i'm going to collect the whole series or not but this was my absolute favorite i really enjoyed reading the series i can't wait for the spinoff of the series that wasn't a very good description but you probably heard of it i think uh <laughs> And then I got a bunch, I think one day I was like, I need some nonfiction books because I am just not reading nonfiction this year at all. So I just like went over to the nonfiction section at our library sale and picked up a bunch of them. And oh, I did pick up another book. Let me actually do that first. Okay. Okay. So actually, yeah, I did pick up a Court of Thorns and Roses. <laughs> Um, so yeah, this one is the very first one of this book and the last one's Court of Wings and Rune and then there's Court of Frost and Starlight, but Frost and Starlight is such a small tiny book. You don't really need it. I think part of the trilogy and it seems to me like it's a spinoff, like she's going to write a spinoff. Anyway, I really enjoyed these. So I just have to collect the last one. I don't know why I'm doing this lately, getting like paperbacks and hardbacks together. But yeah, this is the first book when she first goes to the Fey world. This is the second book after she's like basically in, in this book, she's basically like ran away and is starting a whole new life in the Fey world and she, in this book. Um, and this one, it was like her introduction into it. And she has to like go to battle in this one. <laughs> but this one was so much fun. So yeah, I'm glad I have two of them now. Not realizing that I got two in July, apparently. And um, yeah, these look, I mean, these are in such good condition. Maybe that's why I picked them up both different, but whatever. I really like them. And I can't wait to find the third one, which is Court of Wings and Ruin, which that one took me forever to read, but I ended up really liking it still. Okay, so my nonfiction pieces. I was wanting to read since I read Becoming, I was like, I want to go back and start some more of those like the presidential and first lady biographies. So um, I did over there see 41 Portrait of My Father by George W. Bush. So this is George W. Bush writing about his father's presidency and what it meant to him. I heard this is one of his best-ish biographies by him. So yeah, when I saw it in the, when I saw it in the nonfiction pieces, I went ahead and picked it up. It does have his lovely father there and him. And then the next one I picked up was Jackie's Girl, My Life with the Kennedy Family, which I read a lot of Kennedy Family, I think, spinoffs. And um, so this is a memoir by, of Kath, by Kathy Mc. Cowan. Wait. This girl grew up in Ireland. She became, she ended up becoming Jackie Kennedy's assistant. And I read another one, but, and it was Jackie Kennedy's like super, super secret, <laughs> secret agent um, through the Kennedy years that he was in office. And then once, uh, once he died and he was laid to rest and the secret service agent got reassigned, but it was his years with her. And so, yeah, I thought this one would be interesting as well. Her assistant's perspective, probably a whole different thing. He felt, I think, felt very close to her in that book. So I really enjoyed that one. It's one of my favorite nonfiction pieces. And then um, I also picked up Dreams of My Father by Barack Obama, which he hasn't come out with his official memoir, but this is the one he wrote like really early on, I think. Um, I think right out of college or right after college, this is the book he wrote. It became more famous, obviously, when he was running from president. So I thought I'd start with this one. When he ever puts out his memoir, I'll probably read it. And yeah, I think those are all the nonfiction pieces. I love, no matter what side, political side, I love reading presidential history. I think it's because I'm a historian. So for me, I find it fascinating behind the stories of the first ladies and, um, and presidents too. Like what made them become president and get there? <laughs> Uh, so the next three are Rachel Gibson books. I read a series of Rachel Gibson and these two are from that series and then this one is not. This one I just picked up because it was like, I think the three of these were each like a quarter because I think it was like buy four for a dollar romances or something like that at our library. These two were some of my favorites, The Art of Running in Hills and See Jane Score, which I'll put down um, a link below hopefully to reviews on these. But yeah, I read 
or you can just go watch my July wrap up. I read the entire like Chinook series in July, which is her hockey team series, which is really fun. Little hockey team romances. But these are two of my favorites out of that series. I have like four or five. I would, well, like probably four out of that series I would pick up overall. This one, I have no idea what it's about. Not another bad date. It just looks sunny. So this is a Texan story, I think, family and football. This is about a girl running into an older boyfriend, I believe. She kind of has a lot of those. And so yeah, hopefully it's good. Sometimes I really like those when they go back to the older ones. I think that Rachel Gibson is better like built up romance in those ones, I think, because it takes them longer. They just like don't jump into things because they don't really know, they know each other. So they're more hesitant. And I typically like those stories more. I think that's why I picked it up. So as I'm shoving around my last two books here, and I did get one of these in August, which I'm excited about. Um, neither one of these, but I did get another DC comic in August, which you'll see in my August haul later on, probably in 1st of September. <laughs> but I picked up DC Icons Wonder Woman Warbringer. I think I just picked this one up at f full price on my birthday because I saw it and I absolutely love the series and I wanted to start collecting this series. So yeah, I think I have Wonder Woman and yeah, I won't tell you the other one I got, but it's I'm excited to collect all these and I decided to put paperback. I really like this DC icon thing. Wonder Woman is probably my second, third, tied second favorite. <laughs> um, I think I would go Superman, Wonder Woman, Catwoman, and then Batman on the bottom. But there wasn't a bad book in the bunch. I absolutely love these series that they did and they're just basically like retellings of origin stories um, because this is right when she becomes Wonder Woman. Hers is, this is a story about her and a girl and the girl is like bringing on evil because she is the long lineage daughter of Helen of Troy. So Wonder Woman goes to try and stop it. And the, yeah, tries and stop it, try to like break the curse so this girl doesn't bring on like horrible things all the time. And then the last book I picked up, I couldn't help it. Also again, 99% mine. I picked this one up on my birthday by Sally Soren. I read her book last year and didn't love it. And then I picked up this one and I absolutely loved it. So The Hating Game was hugely popular if you haven't heard about it, 99% mine. Um, also got a lot of popularity because The Hating Game was so popular last year. But 99% mine is a completely different story. It's about a girl who's remodeling a home because she inherited a home from an aunt who's passed away. And then this guy's a construction worker. She knew him growing up. It was his brother's best friend. You get it, romance, Kindle, but I absolutely loved it. It was such a fun read this year. And those are all the books I picked up in July. Most of the books I have already read because I'm trying to pick up books that I read and know and I love, want to keep. And so that's where I'm trying to go, but a bunch of them not. A bunch of them were just cheap books that I was like, yeah, I probably want to read this. Sounds pretty good. <laughs> and yeah, those are all the things. So if you guys are still here, don't forget to subscribe down below. Hit the bell. The bell just tells you, it doesn't, it just tells you when you get onto YouTube, like I put out a video. If you don't hit the bell, it, it won't tell you. It'll just kind of be through your, you'd have to scroll through subscriptions. So yeah, totally free to just hit subscribe and hit the bell and I will see you guys in the next one. See you guys next time. Bye.